Now, here is something interesting. Abu Hamza Thumali says, one day I went to visit Imam Ali ibn al-Husayn al-Sajjad, salamullahi alayh, and he says, it was Friday. Friday. He said, so I prayed Fajr behind the Imam, and then Imam alayhi salam came home in Medina. This is in Medina. He said, he came home and he called upon a maid. He had a maid. Her name was Sakina. He said, yeah, Sakina, today is Friday. Open the doors. Any beggar or destitute who comes to ask for help, give him. Don't turn anyone away. It's Friday today. Abu Hamza said, I said, Ya ibn Rasulillah, but not everyone who's asking, who's begging, is really authentic. There are some people who are not authentic. They're not genuine. He said, it doesn't matter, it's Friday. I am afraid whatever the difficulties that were inflicted upon Ya'qub would be inflicted upon us. He said, what is the difficulty that was inflicted upon Ya'qub, Ibn Rasulullah? He said, Ya'qub used to sacrifice a sheep every day. Every day. He would kill a sheep. He would take some of this sheep for himself and his children. They eat from it. The other, they give away for sadaqah. Anyone who comes to ask them for food, for some water, for some drink, for, they give it to him. He said one day, they sacrificed the sheep. They started giving away until the time of iftar came. Time of maghrib came. So he and his son sat down to eat. At that time, a person came knocking at the door. Saying, can you feed the destitute? Can you feed the hungry? But they said, they did not pay attention to him. They said, maybe he is not genuine. He's not genuine. Those who are poor, they usually come to see us in the daytime. This guy is coming late. So probably he's somebody who is not genuine. He heard there is food here, so he started to come. So they did not pay attention to him. This man then remained hungry. Then he went and he prayed to Allah. He said, Ya Allah, I'm going to spend the night hungry. Take care of me, Ya Allah. And he cried and went to sleep. Ya'qub and his children, they had their meal and they also went to sleep. Jibra'il alayhi salam then came to Ya'qub alayhi salam. He said, Ya Ya'qub, Allah is giving you a salam and saying, how could you turn the mu'min servant of mine? He's a mu'min. And he was genuine. How could you turn him away? How could you stay the night full while another mu'min is hungry? Because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, Ya Ya'qub, there will be a difficulty that will be inflicted upon you. As a result of that. Now whatever Ya'qub did was not haram. It was not haram. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts above perfection status from the prophets. Whatever is good from us for the prophets can be bad. We might spend half an hour at the night praying. For us this is great. For the prophets that's very bad. Half an hour they spend the whole night praying. They might sleep half an hour. So whatever we do that we think is good for the prophets is not good. They have a much higher status. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he chose the prophets for himself. He keeps them pure. Sometimes a teacher, a teacher might have a student who always gets 100%, 100%. One time the student might get 95%. He might go to the student and say, what happened this time? How come? Even though mashallah is yani, pretty good. But the teacher is having higher expectation from the student. He always scores 100%. Even though the student didn't do anything wrong. He's still doing very well. He's still an A+. Plus. But the teacher has high expectations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has high expectations of his prophets. He chose them. And hence, when Ya'qub didn't do this, he said, Ya Ya'qub, a tragedy or a difficulty will be inflicted upon you. 
And then Abu Hamza said, I asked Imam al-Sajjad I said, so when did Yusuf, Prophet Yusuf السلام, see his dream, the dream when he saw the planets doing sujood and the sun and the moon? He said it was the same night, that same night that Yusuf saw the dream and hence it led to Yusuf being taken away from his father. And that's why Imam al-Sajjad said, we don't want to risk it. Any person who's asking, give him. Give him. It's telling us, Ya Mu'mineen, Ya Mu'minat, we have to do our part in helping those who are poor as much as we can. Sometimes many poor people come, at least, at least, if you don't want to help them, don't be rude to them. Be kind. I'm sorry, fellas, I can't help you. But some people, unfortunately, they are rude to the, such individuals. After all, he is also a human or she's a human being too. So, that then led to the story of Yusuf السلام, being taken away from his father. So they took Yusuf السلام, and the ayah then tells us, and that's ayah number 15, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبُوا بِهِ It is said, on that day, Yaqub السلام, took his son Yusuf and he hugged him dearly. And he walked with them out up to the outskirts of the city, to the boundaries of the city. And then he took him, he hugged him a second time very dearly. And he smelled him and he said to his brothers, take care of him. They said, okay, our father, we'll take care of him. And then they went. And he was in such grief, in such pain for giving Yusuf to them. You know, when I read that, I said, subhanallah, here is Yaqub giving his son, Yusuf, to his brothers. And that's how much grief he's going through. He said, assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. What was your state like when your son, Ali al-Akbar, was going not with his brothers, with the enemies? He's going to the enemies. That was a difficult situation as well. Nonetheless, they took him. As long as her father was looking at them, they were treating Yusuf very gently, very kindly, until the father left. At that time, they started pouring all their hate and their jealousy onto Yusuf. They started beating him, bothering him, until they took him to this well, Al-Jub. Al-Jub is a well that, does, that is not built. You know, sometimes you go to a well that is built with bricks. And sometimes, you know, you find, no, it's on just clay. There's clay on the side. So a job is actually the clay, the one with clay. So they went to this job. Allah says, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبُوا بِهِ When they took him, all of them, ذَهَبُوا, all of them. وَأَجْمَعُوا أَنْ يَجْعَلُوهُ فِي غَيَابَةِ الْجُبْ وَأَجْمَعُوا It means they had a consensus amongst them that they throw him into the job. Initially, when they were discussing, shall we kill him? Apparently, not everybody agreed on the killing. That's why they came up with another plan. Let's throw him somewhere far. But this case, everybody was happy with this plan. So Allah is saying, in this case, they all agreed on this plan. We said غيابت الجب means when the well is so deep that you can't see inside it anymore. It's so dark. So they agreed to put him so far deep into the well. And then Quran stops there, pauses there. Doesn't tell us what happened. All of a sudden Allah then says, وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِ لَتُنَبِّئَنَّهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِمْ هَذَا وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And we reveal to him that you will tell them of what they are doing to you without them knowing about it. So there is kind of a gap, if you notice. Allah says when they went and they had their consensus to throw him into the well, and all of a sudden Allah says, and we revealed to him. So what happened then? How did they throw him into the well? The events that took place while throwing, that, that Allah does not describe. And this is part of the eloquence. When sometimes a person is describing a tragedy, a big tragedy, a great tragedy. Sometimes when people talk about the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, 
describing the martyrdom is not easy. So you find sometimes some speakers, some individuals, they say, after all the companions and the family of Imam Hussein salam were martyred, then Imam Hussein salam went to the battlefield. And then they don't describe what happened next because it's such a severe situation. It brings tears to the eyes, tears the heart. So you find them saying, and then after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, then the family was taken as prisoners. So then what happened between Imam Hussein and then his martyrdom, they don't describe it because it's such a severe situation. Allah is saying the same thing. Here is a prophet of Allah, Yusuf alayhi salam. He's being taken away from another prophet of Allah, Ya'qub alayhi salam. And they're throwing him into the well. That is a devastating situation. It is said when Ya'qub alayhi salam finally came back and met with Yusuf many years later. Ya'qub asked Yusuf, Yusuf, what did they do to you when they took you? He said, Father, don't ask. He said, no, I insist. He said, they took me to the well. And then they told me, take off your shirt. I told them, brothers, I'm your brother. Why are you doing this to me? He said, one of them pulled a knife and said, take it out. So then I took it out. At that moment, Yaqub fainted. He fainted when he heard this. Then when he woke up, he said, Ya Yusuf, then what? He said, Father, I swear upon you by my fathers, by the God of my fathers, Ibrahim and Ishaq, not to ask. He said, now that you've sworn upon me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, I won't ask. Because it's devastating. Yusuf al Islam knows if he tells the father, he's going to tear his heart. Such a difficult moment. So they took his shirt. They told him, take off your shirt. So they took his shirt and then they threw him into the well. It is said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a rock, ordered a rock to come out of this well so that Yusuf can go onto the rock, climb onto this rock in this darkness. And one of the brothers, Yehuda, one of the brothers of Yusuf, he was given the charge to go and give food to him every day and to monitor to see what happens to him. He stayed into the well for two days or some say three days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then revealed to him. He said, don't worry, Ya Yusuf. Don't worry. One day you will tell your brothers about what they did to you. Then Jibra'il came to him and he said, Ya Yusuf, do you want Allah to save you from this well? He said, yes. He said, then read this dua. Say, Ya ilaha Ibrahim wa Ishaq wa Ya'qub. O Lord of Ibrahim, Ishaq and Ya'qub. ارحم ضعفي وقلة حيلتي وصغري Have mercy upon my weakness and my helplessness. I don't have anyone to help me. And my young age. And he taught him another dua. He said also recite, say, اللهم إني أسألك فإن لك الحمد كله And listen to this one. لا إله إلا أنت الحنان المنان بديع السماوات والأرض ذو الجلال والإكرام صل على محمد وآل محمد واجعل لي من أمري فرجا ومخرجا وارزقني من حيث أحتسب ومن حيث لا أحتسب اللهم صل على محمد So Jibra'il is telling Yusuf السلام, to pray to Allah, praise him, some of his Asma'ullah al-Husna, Anta al-Hannan al-Mannan, Badi'u al-Samawati wal-Ard, and then it says, Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. When you say salawat, then inshallah, Allah will bless you, will save you. And indeed, the moment he said this dua, Allah sent a caravan. It is said that caravan that came did not usually come on that route. They had a different route. They were heading to Egypt, but via a different route. They got lost. They got lost, and then they found this well. And if you remember, I mentioned 
Usually caravans used to plan their way, their travel around water, wherever water was, so that they could fuel. They can ask for water. Otherwise, they'll run out of drinks and they might die. So this caravan lost their way. The minute they found the well, they were happy. They said, let's go, come to the well. So they came to the well. And then the brothers, after they did this, they came back to their fathers. وَجَاءُوا أَبَاهُمْ عِشَاءَ يَبْكُونَ Verse number 16. Now here are the, the tears. They're coming to their fathers with tears in their eyes, crying, weeping. I read one hadith that is said that Lawi, one of their brothers, by the name of Lawi, and I mentioned this name, Lawi, several times, and I tell you to keep that name in mind because there's something very interesting about Lawi later on. Lawi told his brothers, he said, brothers, they said, yes. He said, we're ten. They said, yes. He said, our father is a prophet, right? They said, yes. Our grandfather was a prophet. They said, yes. Our great-grandfather was also a prophet. They said, yes. They said, so do you think, this is after they threw Yusuf in the well. He said, do you think that Allah is not going to tell our father about what we just did? So they said, that's true. What shall we do then? He said, let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pray to Allah that he doesn't tell our father. So they did. It is said in their time, at that time, the minimum required for prayer was 11 individuals. You need 11 to have jama'ah in their time. Less than 11, you cannot pray jama'ah. You need one imam plus 10, 11. So they said, well, we are only 10. Who's going to be our imam? Lawi said, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be our imam. Let us pray to Allah that he does not expose us. So they prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to expose them. And indeed, he didn't. So they went to Ya'qub, alayhi salam, crying with tears in their eyes. What did they tell their father now? قَالُوا يَا أَبَانَا إِنَّا ذَهَبْنَا نَسْتَبِقَ وَتَرَكْنَا يُوسُفَ عِنْدَ مَتَاعِنَا فَأَكَلَهُ الذِّئْبِ Oh father, we went and they were speaking in the soft, gentle language. يَا أَبَانَا يَا أَبَانَا is this language of compassion. Language of mercy. So oh father, we went out there, and there are tears in their eyes. They said, Ya Father, we went there, we went out to play. And because we're 10 strong, we're fast, so we started rushing really quickly. Yusuf was behind us, he was lagging behind. He's smaller, weaker. So we started running, in Nada Habna Na Stabak, Stabak, racing. We kept Yusuf. To take a look at our stuff, our things, the sheep and the other things. We kept him there. Because he's younger, he cannot compete with us. So we kept him. We told him, Yusuf, you stay here. We're going to go around and then we'll come back. But when we came back, what did we see? The wolf came and ate Yusuf. وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُؤْمِنٍ لَنَا وَلَوْ كُنَّا صَادِقِينَ And I, when we know it is difficult for you to believe us, even if we are telling the truth. It's difficult. It's interesting here, there is a hadith of the Prophet that says, Do not, do not teach people to lie. What does he mean? He said, when Ya'qub said, I am worried that if you take Yusuf with you, the wolf will eat him. The Prophet says the brothers of Yusuf did not think about that actually. They did not think of that until their father told them that I'm worried that the wolf will eat. They said, this is a great idea. So we'll tell him that the wolf ate Yusuf. So the Prophet says, sometimes be careful what you say. Of course, Ya'qub didn't do anything wrong. He was teaching his sons. But the Prophet tells us, watch what you say. Sometimes you teach people to lie by telling them how to. 
You know, they say the example they give. Sometimes, I don't know if you've seen some children, a son. You might have a son who's two years old, and you give him a ball. You say, son, don't throw the ball at this light, for example. You see this light here? Don't throw the ball at it. Play with it. Just, you know, the son may not have even thought about throwing the ball at the light. But now that you told him, don't throw it at the light, you know, he becomes curious. So what happens if I do throw the ball at the light? And he takes it and throws it at the light. So sometimes you got to be careful there, you know, teach your children. You know. I see some people here with sons, you know, mashallah. Watch what you tell them. And if they break your light at home, don't come and complain to me. Huh? You know, it's not my fault. So they came to you, the father, alayhi salam, Yaqub, and they said, he's dead, he got killed by the wolf, he was eaten by the wolf, and you're not going to believe us, but we have a proof. We have a proof, we have evidence. What's the evidence? We brought you the shirt full of blood, covered in blood. It is said they took either a sheep or a deer. They found the deer, they sacrificed the deer, and they took the blood of the deer, and they soaked it into the shirt. They soaked the shirt into the blood of the deer. So they brought the shirt to Yusuf, alayhi salam, to Yaqub, alayhi salam. And Allah says, وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيصِهِ بِدَمٍ كَذِبٍ they brought his shirt with false blood. False blood. Blood of a lie. This became, brothers and sisters, in Arabic, it became a saying, a saying. You say somebody is as innocent as the wolf from the blood of Yusuf, alayhi salam. The wolf is innocent from the blood of Yusuf. He didn't do it. So this became a saying, and that's why when they asked a person, was Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam, this is a Sunni scholar, they asked him, was Ali ibn Abi Talib responsible for the blood of Uthman? Was he the one? قَالْ إِنَّهُ بَرِيءٌ كَبَرَاءَةِ الذِّئْبِ مِنْ دَمِ Ali had nothing to do with the blood of Uthman. He is as innocent as the wolf from the blood of Yusuf. But people wanted to give an excuse. Otherwise, how can they rise against the Khalifa? What excuse? So they said, oh, he is the killer of Uthman. And so on and so forth. Anyways, so they brought this false shirt. But subhanallah, a liar, a liar, Allah exposes him. They brought the shirt. What they forgot to do is to tear the shirt. They brought a regular, you know, good shirt to you, the, the father. They said, here, this is the shirt of Yusuf. Now the father looked at the shirt, Yaqub alayhi salam, looked at the shirt. He said, I am really surprised at this wolf. He was so hungry that he ate my son, yet he was so kind to his shirt that he kept it all intact. So he realized that they're lying. Otherwise, what kind of a shirt, what kind of a wolf is this? Take your shirt off and then let me eat you? And maybe also he wore the napkin and put this uh, the, the knife and the fork in his hand too. So even the baby is crying. I feel sorry. Even he's feeling sorry as well. Yeah. So they said, وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيصِهِ بِدَمٍ كَذِبٍ when he looked at the shirt, he realized, قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرًا He said, yourselves have ordered you to do something that's evil, that's bad. But then he responds, he says, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ We'll be patient. One day you will be exposed. One day he realized that Yusuf is not dead. Or at least he realized that they did not kill Yusuf. The way that they claim they did. And this is something that we have to be careful of, mu'mineen and mu'minat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya'qub is saying, بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ Taswil means, and nafs means that the body or the, the shaitan will tell you that do this ma'siyah and it's such a beautiful thing to do. He makes the sin look so nice. He doesn't think, make, you one, make one think of the consequences of this sin. That's what you, Yaqub told his sons, that shaitan has fooled you. He made you think that whatever you're doing is the best thing that you're doing. 
But you're not realizing that what you're doing is such a great sin. They're bothering their father. They're bothering their brother, Ya Yusuf. And it is said when he saw this, he fainted. Yaqub fainted, alayhi salam. So the brothers came and they said, we hope we did not kill our father. Because that was not the plan. Until finally he woke up and he then, then said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Sabrun Jamil means what? Patience. But what kind of patience? Patience where one does not complain of Allah وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. That is the patience. Sometimes a person gets into an accident and every person he sees, he says, oh, you know, I had an accident. It was such a difficult time. Everything is not going very well. I don't know why Allah is doing this to me. That is no patience. Not, not sabrun jameel. Not a patience where a person is having the patience not to complain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sabrun jameel means no. I will be patient and I will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows. And that's why it is said, in the day of judgment, there is a gate that will lead to Jannah. Jannah has several gates. Several gates. One of the gates of Jannah is a bab called Bab al Sabirin, the gate of those who are patient. Anybody who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya inflicts with difficulties and he is patient on it. He doesn't say. He keeps on patient, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will say, Enter this gate. Enter Jannah from this gate, Babu Sabirin. Now, for the Mu'mineen, there is another gate as well, by the name of Babu al the gate of those who have been inflicted with difficulties. Bilal is narrating this hadith from the Prophet. He said, So I asked the Prophet, I said, Ya Rasulullah, isn't the gate of Bala the same as the gate of patience? After all, somebody, Allah inflicts somebody with difficulties and then he is patient. He, goes, he says, No, for the Mu'min, even if he is not patient, even if he's not patient, he starts complaining, Allah out of his mercy, because he's a mu'min, will make him enter Jannah, but from this gate, the other gate, Babu al-Bala, not Babu al-Sabirin. So Ya'qub alayhi salam says, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ Which means when we go through difficulties in life, be patient. Don't complain of Allah wal-Iyadu billah. Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam says, فَإِذَا بْتُلِيتَ بِعُسْرَةٍ فَاصْبِرْ لَهَا صَبْرَ الْكَرِيمِ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ أَحْزَمُ لَا تَشْكُوَنَّ إِلَى الْخَلَاءِقِ إِنَّمَا تَشْكُرْ رَحِيمَ إِلَى الَّذِي لَا يَرْحَمُ He says, don't complain to people when you are inflicted with difficulties because you're complaining Allah the merciful to the one who has no mercy, the human being. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ so now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya'qub is asking for patience. He's saying, we're going to have patience, inshaAllah. But then he asked for the help from Allah. وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one whom I ask for help on what you're describing. This is also mentioned in another ayah in the Quran. Allah says, بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Sabr and Salat. So whenever you go through difficulties, have the patience and also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah for the help. And Allah will give you the help. Sometimes he will delay the help because he wants to test you. He wants to test. Even the prophets get tested. Even the prophets. And the prophets, they don't get tested because they commit a sin. No, they're infallible. But Allah wants to elevate their status in Jannah. He wants to give them higher ranks. So finally... They do that. And then Allah now talks about Yusuf. What happens to Yusuf? Allah says in verse number 19, A caravan came and they sent a runner. They said, go get us some water. Fetch us some water. So this guy goes. He takes his pail, his bucket, and he puts it down. When Yusuf السلام, sees that, he hangs on. This guy draws out the, ba the pail or the bucket, and all of a sudden says, what? My goodness. قَالَ يَا بُشْرَى هَذَا غُلَامٌ What good news. I mean, this boy is such a handsome-looking boy in here. 
It is said Yusuf السلام, by that time was about nine years old when he was thrown into the well. He was nine years old. So he was so happy. He was, subhanallah, what is this? I'm here to fetch some water and all of a sudden I see a moon coming out of the well. قال يا بشرى هذا غلام فأسروه بضاعة So they took him as business for trade to sell him. Package. Now it is said when the brothers of Yusuf saw that they was taken out of the well they came and they told the caravan they said this man is our slave this boy is our slave he's our servant we'll sell him to you. How much will you buy him for? They said, we'll buy him for 20 dirham. They said, okay, accept it. So they sold him for 20 dirhams. And each brother took two dirhams. They divided. Other Mufassirin say, no. They themselves, the, the man who took him out, he sold it to other people in the caravan. He said, well, I found this boy. I'm going to sell him. Who wants to buy him? And others say, well, I'll buy him. Somebody else said, I'll buy him and I'll sell him. I'll have some business with him. Nonetheless, so they bought or they took Yusuf and they sold him within themselves. The caravan took him. And then Allah says, Wallahu alimun bima ya'malun. And Allah is all aware of what they're all doing. Allah knows what the brothers of Yusuf are doing. Allah knows what those caravan is doing. Allah is making everything. And finally Allah says, Wa sharawuhu bi thamanin bakhsin darahima ma'dudah wa kanu fihi min zahideen And they bought him with a very insignificant amount of money 20 dirham is nothing I mean for such a handsome looking boy who looks like the moon 20 dirham is nothing 20 silver coins it's very cheap and they really were not interested in him not because they did not like him but because they realized this boy is not an ordinary boy it is said in the hadith that the man who fetched the water his name was Malik Malik so Malik one day came to Yusuf when he was in the caravan. He said, tell me, who are you? He said, my name is Yusuf. He said, who's your father? He said, my father is Yaqub. And my grandfather is Ishaq. And my grand-grandfather is Ibrahim. He said, you come from that family? He said, yes. He said, my goodness. So what brought you there? He told him, my brothers. They became jealous of me and they threw me into that well. He then told him, he said, listen, since you're such a holy man, you're a holy boy, I have been married for so many years and I don't have children. Can you pray to Allah to grant me children? He said, okay. So he prayed to Allah. He said, yeah, Allah grant him children. It is said that he had 12 sons afterwards, this Malik. His wife gave birth six times, every time twins, mashallah. So go pray to Allah tonight, you know, by the barakah of Yusuf, yani. And then inshallah, Allah will give you the dozen. So the caravan then took Yusuf, where to, what happened, inshallah, we'll find out tomorrow. What did they do with Yusuf, alayhi salam? Right now, let us raise hand, our hands for the dua, inshallah, may Allah accept our dua by the barakah of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, just like Yusuf prayed to Allah. By the barakah of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amma yujibu al-madhtar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su'u. Amma yujibu al-madhtar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su'u. Amma yujibu al-madhtar idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su'u. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله يا مفرج هم يعقوب فرج همومنا يا الله أي منفس غم يوسف نفس عنا غمومنا يا الله اللهم اكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة يا الله اللهم اقض حوائج المحتاجين 
اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله اللهم اجعلنا من شيعة محمد وآل محمد اللهم شافي وعافي جميع المرضى يا الله على الخصوص من أوصونا بالدعاء منهم اللهم اقض حوائجهم وشافي مرضاهم اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وقائدا ونا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه اللهم نقسم عليك بالزهراء فاطمة إلا ما رزقتنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح موات الجالسين والحاضرين رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات